introduction to animals. This is our classification unit, section three, characteristics of animals. Uh, we're gonna go through a bell ringer and please take that bell ringer and put it inside of your warm up sheet. We'll then cover some key ideas for this section. We'll then go into general features of animals. So what are some of those characteristics that are um, things that we see in all animals? We'll look at kinds of animals and then we'll summarize this section. So your bell ringer. Write the names of the smallest and the largest animals that you can think of. Then describe in a few sentences the major characteristics of both animals. So for example, maybe you choose a whale being the largest and a mouse being the smallest. Key ideas. At the end of this section, you should be able to describe the general features that all animals share. And you should also be able to explain the two groups that all animals are informally classified into. General features of animals. Animals are multicellular. They are heterotrophic. And they also lack a cell wall. Organisms that we know of that have cell walls would be plants. Cell wall is made up of cellulose in plants and it's very rigid. So if you are sledding down a hill and you come in contact with a tree, that tree doesn't move very much. The cell wall helps to protect it. If you were to take your finger and push on your arm, you notice that your skin indents. With your cells being made up of a cell uh, membrane instead of a wall, your cells are easier, it's easier for your cells to move. Uh, humans depend on other animals for food, companionship, and also to pollinate crops. For example, bees. So first part participation question. Animals are heterotrophic, multicellular organisms that lack what? A, a cell wall, B, a cell nucleus, C, cell membrane, D, backbone, E, muscular structure. If you're unsure of the answer, now would be the time to go back to the previous slide and review the previous slide. Multicellularity. Animals are multicellular, which means that they are made up of many cells. Most animals have many types of specialized cells that work together. So for example, your body has nerve cells that communicate with muscle cells. Animal cells do not have cell walls. So second participation question. What is the term that describes an organism that is made up of many cells? A. Multicellular B. Extracellular C. Unicellular D. Ambidextrous or E. Organ system, systemic. Remember, whenever doing multiple choice questions, always eliminate the wrong answers first. Organ systemic is definitely not a correct answer. Ambidextrous is when you can write with both hands. It's not a correct answer. Heterotrophy. Animals are heterotrophs. Those are organisms that cannot make their own food. So they're organisms that have to move to get their food. All organisms must move in order to feed, except for animals like sponges and corals, which are considered filter feeders. So they just simply set in the location where they are growing, and they filter out the water column and catch any floating by particles of food. Autotrophs, autotrophs are organisms, are organisms that obtain energy, energy by, making by making their own food. Their own food. Most, Most autotrophs, such as, such as plants, plants, use sunlight, use sunlight as, their as their source of energy. Of energy. Other, autotrophs Other autotrophs use chemicals, use chemicals in, their in their environment. Heterotrophs, heterotrophs are, organisms are organisms that must take in food to meet their, to meet their energy, energy needs. 
Rabbits, rabbits eat plants to meet their, to meet their energy, needs. energy needs. Foxes, Foxes eat, rabbits eat rabbits for the same, for the same reason. reason. Movement. Most animals move, and locomotion is the ability to move from place to place. Locomotion helps animals to find food. It also helps them to find favorable, favorable environments in which to live. The ability to move also allows organisms to avoid present predators. Obviously, a rabbit not being able to move is not going to get away from a fox. The cells, the cells become, become many different types of tissue. Types of tissue. When it comes to most animals, unlike animals, animals are multicellular organisms that lack cell, cell walls. Unlike, unlike plants, animals, animals, animals cannot, cannot make, make their food. own food. They must, they must seek, seek out food sources in their, in their environment. environment. Most, most animals, animals can move in many different ways in search of food, shelter, or mates. When it comes when it time for reproduction, reproduction animals, animals' sex cells, eggs, eggs or sperm, come together, come together to form the first cell of a new individual. The fertilized egg, egg cell then divides into many different cells to form an embryo. The cells, the cells become many different types of tissue, types of tissue including, including muscle tissue and nervous tissue, tissue. Two, types two types of tissue that, that characterize animals. animals. Animals are often informally grouped into invertebrate groups or vertebrate groups. Vertebrates only make up a small portion of all of the animals on the planet. In fact, vertebrates, the chordates, belong to the phylum chordata, which is the only group of vertebrates. So the vast majority of animals that we come in contact with on a day-to-day -day basis are invertebrates and typically we squish those invertebrates. Uh, the next slide will show examples of 11 phyla in the kingdom Animalia. There are about 35 total phyla in the kingdom Animalia and you will see on the next slide that the vast majority of organisms that we know of on the planet are considered invertebrates. The organisms with no true tissues, the periphera, the sponges, these organisms basically have one type of cell that makes up their entire body. The two groups that have radial symmetry. Radial symmetry is when we were to take, or if we were to take that organism and cut it all the way straight down its body, we would have two halves that were exactly the same. Cnidaria is one of those groups. The cnidarians are organisms that are attached to the ground and they also um, have stinging cells. Platyhelminthes, the flatworms, the rotifers. Most of these are very, very small and difficult to see without a magnifying glass or microscope. The group Mollusca, the group Annelida, all of these groups are animals without a backbone. Group Nematoda, the roundworms, which roundworms are mostly uh, parasitic organisms. They live within other organisms. The arthropods. So up until we we got to the arthropods, all other organisms had absolutely no structure other than the mollusks to give them support. Finally we get to the arthropods and all of these organisms have an external skeleton that gives their body support. We then go to the group Echinodermata, the sea stars. And you would think that the sea stars were very similar to some of these other groups that do not have any type of backbone. However, echinoderms are a little bit more special. They contain a water vascular system that fills up with water, and so they have kind of a, uh, an internal system that is allowed to fill with water that gives them some support. And then finally,
finally, the last group, the chordates, the phylum chordata. These are all of the organisms that have backbones. So how many phyla are there for vertebrates? A1, B2, C3, D4, E5. Which phyla has no true tissues? A, the chordates, phylum chordata. B, the mollusks, phylum mollusca. C, the segmented worms, phylum annelida. D, the arthropods, phylum arthropoda. Or E, the sponges, phylum periphera. Which phylum do humans belong to? A. Chordata B. Mollusca C. Annelida D. Arthropoda E. Periphera So which of those groups do we belong to? The invertebrates. An invertebrate is an animal that does not have a backbone. Some examples include sponges, ants, and octopus. Or the spider that you tend to see crawling around your house. Land invertebrates tend to be quite small because they do not have an internal skeleton to support them. In the ocean, however, there are a few invertebrates such as the giant squid that can grow extremely large. The reason that they can grow very large is because water helps to support that organism. If we were to have a giant squid walking around on the planet, on land, its body would end up squished beneath itself. So organisms that are land dwelling have to have some, turn, some type of internal or external support system. Some invertebrates form the basis of an entire organism. For example, coral skeletons, they form coral reefs that provide a habitat for many other organisms. So which of the following is not an invertebrate? A, an ant, B, a crab, C, a frog, D, an octopus, E, a sponge. If you're unsure, go back and review the definition of an invertebrate. Vertebrates. Vertebrates have a cranium and an internal skeleton composed of bone or cartilage. Vertebrates are chordates that have a backbone. The backbone supports and protects a dorsal, a dorsal nerve cord, so dorsal being the top. If we think about nerve cords in other organisms, the dorsal side is the top side. It also helps to provide a site for muscle attachment. So many of the muscles that are on your body are attached to your backbone. And many of the nerve endings that come off of your backbone then are attached to those muscles and it allows for communication between your brain and the muscle cells throughout your body. So what two things do all vertebrates have? A, a cranium and an internal skeleton. B, a skeleton and cartilage. C, a backbone and a skeleton. D, a cranium and cartilage. Or E, a central nervous system and organs. Our summary. Animals are multicellular, heterotrophic organisms which lack a cell wall. Our cells are made up of membranes on the outside. And please remember also that the membrane is a lipid bilayer. This allows for uh, water to pass through the cell, but that water is not allowed to dissolve the cell. Remember also that heterotrophic means organisms have to go consume food. They can't make their own like autotrophs do. 
And multicellular simply means that or, uh, animals are made up of more than one cell. Animals are often informally grouped as invertebrates or vertebrates, although vertebrates make up only a small portion of all of the animals on the planet. Specifically, only one group or one phylum called chordata. So prior to leaving at the end of the hour, you must complete the following activity. On the back of the note sheet, you have the picture that I went through in the slide. Please circle all of the animals that would be classified as invertebrates. So we're looking for all of the organisms that are invertebrates on the back of the note sheet. What are they? Vertebrates. Vertebrates are animals with an internal skeleton. These animals include mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, and fish. Invertebrates. Invertebrate are animals with no backbone. Animals such as worms, starfish, snails, jellyfish, and insects. So the next time you see an animal outside, ask yourself, is that a vertebrae or an invertebrae?